Okay. All right, everybody, we are back. And it is our great pleasure to have in our midst here of all the great people, another great icon on the Canadian poetry scene, Mr. George McWhorter. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about him. George McWhorter is a Northern Irish Canadian writer, translator, editor, teacher, and in March 2007, he was named Vancouver's inaugural Poet Laureate for a two-year term. In 1957, he began combined scholarship studying English and Spanish at Queen's University Belfast and education at Strand Millis College in Belfast. After graduating, McWhorter taught in Kilkeel and Bangor, County Down, Northern Ireland, and in Barcelona, Spain before moving to Port Alberni, BC, Canada. After receiving his MA, from UBC, where he studied under Michael Bullock and J. Michael Yates, he stayed on to become a full professor in 1982 and head of the creative writing department from 1983 to 1993. At UBC, he was awarded a Killam Prize for Teaching in 1998 and the first Killam Prize for Mentoring at UBC in 2004. Then in 2005, the Sam Black Prize for Service to the Creative and Performing Arts. He retired as a professor emeritus in 2005, and in the same year, he was given a Life Membership Award by the League of Canadian Poets. He is also a member of the Writers' Union of Canada and Penn, International. He was associated with Prism International Magazine from 1968 to 2005. Like that's 37 years. And interestingly enough, I never thought about that 37 until I told him I would be calling him up in 37 seconds. How strange is that? <laughs> so from 2007 until 2009, he served as the Vancouver's inaugural poet laureate. That's really uh, something, the very first Poet Laureate Vancouver ever had. You know, that's pretty good, all right, yeah. The Warner is the author and editor of numerous books and the recipient of many awards, too many to mention or I'd be here all day. His first book of poetry, Catalan Poems, was a joint winner of the first Commonwealth Poetry Prize with Chinua Achibi's Beware Soul Brother. His latest book of poetry is The Anachronicles. The Anachronicles. Did I say that right? Are the Anachronicles or the Anachronicles? Anachronicles. I wonder why I would call it the Anachronicles. <sighs> so strange. I can't pronounce with crap. Anyway, A Time of Angels by Homera Aridges. Boy, <laughs> I tell you, you're making this not easy, George. <laughs> A Time of Angels by Homero Arigis? Arigis. Arigis, okay, got it. Homero Arigis, his latest volume of poetry and translation. And The Gift of Women, which appeared in November 2014, is his current collection of short stories. George has been around for a long time. He's paid his dues. He's deservedly one of the most well-known, established poets in Canada. Please give him a big hand. See, and thank you, George. He picked up my pen, and here he was a member of Penn International. <laughs> Too many coincidences. Thanks for the introduction, Cassius. <laughs> I can never live up to those things. Oh, you already have. Um, I first of all like to apologize for being so tardy. And not only uh, did I leave late and mistake the time, uh, we got lost around New West. Uh, we couldn't find the turn for uh, Carnarvon. And uh, 
alas, we ended up way, way down there, almost heading, I don't know where would it be, off east somewhere. Anyway, my apologies, and uh, I'll try to get back to where I should have been half an hour, three quarters of an hour ago. Okay, so now we're here uh, in the U.S. beside a uh, great river. Now, I'll begin by reading a poem about another river, uh, the one that runs uh, through the town, the city I come from, Belfast. And that river, it wouldn't be much more than a muddy trickle uh, beside the Fraser. But uh, we thought it was wide and deep enough to dive into and swim in. So I'll begin with that. There is a bridge called for Shaw on the Lagan River that feels to me as though it sits above Belfast, perhaps because we used to dive from it, looking down at the water and down river toward the city. But in that murky flow, we saw bicycles with buckled wheels and frames that had been tossed in when we shot down to stare at the spokes turn with a dim glimmer, which made us ponder for a few breath-deprived moments on what they would be like to ride upside down and underwater as if the river were a road over thinner, the water and the road rolling over a sky where there would be no gravity. Johnny Rogers, five feet five and small man, Mr. Ireland at the time, uh, would suck in his stomach and inflate his chest, poised on the wall in his white posing briefs, black-haired, blue-eyed, and as tanned as a splash of Darjeeling tea. Enter the water. One day, mangled by middle age, he will come back, pectorals puffy as eyelids dive and test the buckled wheels and frame to take him where? Beyond flesh or gravity, back into his young skin, looking up from the bottoms of his plunging eyes at the sky and my face uh, looking down, just as I'm looking for the turn of the page. <laughs> In these lines, black herd as blue-eyed as the sky, and look, the Gaelic god of light, just put in a pot of bone and told to pedal the wagon with legs of lard till day breaks out of the east and the loch at its mouth. So there you go, there's a river 